You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. Your ultimate source about the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resorts. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. Kristen Hetzel Go and Jay Bratton are your guides on this culinary adventure. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. Join them as they discuss the latest food news, expert tips, recommendations, and trip planning advice related to Disney food and dining. From quick service to fine dining, you will discover all the best restaurants and food as they hungrily explore the Disney parks. It brings folks together from all walks of life. The Dining at Disney podcast. And now, your host... Kristen Hetzel Go and Jay Bratton. Hi, it's Kristen from the Dining at Disney podcast, your ultimate source for food and dining at Disneyland as well as Disney World. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2015 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. I had the opportunity, along with other media and Tables in Wonderland members, to check out this fantastic preview of what to expect at this year's festival. Make sure you subscribe as well as like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download and uh, subscribe on iTunes, please. Give us a five-star rating. We love that. So let's go ahead and get into what's going on today. After uh, the preview, I had the chance to sit down with Tony Castelnova from Disney by the Numbers as well as the Disney Parks podcast, Raphael from DeMouse, and... Norma, who is the iPhone Instagrammer for DeMouse, and Al John from Sorcerer Radio and Jedi Mouseketeer. So let's dive into this discussion, and I hope you enjoy. The Dining at Disney podcast. I am Kristen. With me, I've got some special guests today. Starting off, we have Tony Castelnova. He's from Disney by the Numbers as well as the Disney Park podcast. Tony, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Next, we have Raphael, who is from the Mouse. Raphael, you excited about all this? Oh, it's super exciting. Always great to be with you guys. And we have Raphael's assistant, Norma. She, assistant. She, she is. She's the assistant. She takes all of the great uh, iPhone photos for him. She is the main Instagrammer. <laughs> That's true. So happy to join you. <laughs> and last but not least is Al John from Jedi Mouseketeer as well as Sorcerer Radio. Hi. You talk about me all the time on your show. I wonder why. I don't know why, I guess, because I'm stuck dealing with you all the time. I'm her personal assistant as well. Yes, today you are. So, today's show is going to be a big show, and it might possibly be two shows. So, we're discussing the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival today. All of us are Tables in Wonderland uh, members. So, therefore, we attended the very special Tables in Wonderland slash media event today and got a sneak peek at all of those wonderful things that will be coming, especially those new items. Again, this festival, it's still a work in progress, so these are just some of the things that they know will be coming, and again, they did tell us they could be tweaked, I guess, probably depending on what all of us thought of it, but um, let's go ahead and dig into some of the uh, delicious foods that we tried today. So to kick it all off, we're going to start with what they're calling the Rockin' Burger Block Party. It's going to be a new grand tasting event that is debuting. And some of the items that will be at this particular thing are going to be the Oklahoma Barbecue Beef Slider. It uh, has some mmm hops, as in mmm bop, you know, the Hanson Brothers. It has their pale ale used on their onion fries, as well as a smoked bologna baked beans. They did pair it with the mmm hops pale ale. So let's, let's start there. Tony, what were your thoughts on this particular menu item? Best item at the festival. Best item at the festival. Hands down, I would definitely go eat this every time I go there. I loved it. Enjoy it. Well, that's not the only thing. Uh, I, I loved it too, but 
I remember Norma had something she really wanted to say about it. You liked it as well, right? Yes, it was delicious. The meat was very tender. The barbecue sauce was amazing. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's too. Me too. And I remember your... Um, your feeling about it when the moment you bit in you said oh my god and i thought there was something wrong i thought that you were in pain or or maybe you chipped a tooth but no it's because you liked it oh i am so picky actually there's a few things i'm picky about one is beef in general so like my my steak and my burgers have to be cooked perfectly sorry mcdonald's <laughs> Do you know what? I haven't... Oh, right. I haven't had a McDonald's burger in like 24 years. So I don't even worry about that one. Um, but I like mine cooked perfectly. If it's overcooked, undercooked, it's just... I, I just don't want to eat it. And I'm a picky barbecue person. You know, often it's too saucy. It's too overdone. It's dry. Whatever it may be. It, this was perfect. The meat was juicy. It had a lot of flavor. And it wasn't overly sauce. Like, a lot of times you have to over-sauce barbecue. But this one you didn't. It was just nice and, like, spot on. It had awesome flavor, awesome texture, and uh, so good that you would have to go back for more. Now, Raphael, you enjoyed it, too, because I remember you looked at me and you said, this is good. Yeah, I actually had, went out right before uh, it closed uh, where they were kicking us out of the event. We went and there was still a line for this thing, and it was that good. Uh, I actually like that it came with the baked beans on the side. Of course, it's supposed to be a side thing, but me being who I am, I was just pouring it on there onto the sandwich itself. <laughs> Made it a little bit sweeter than, than it was the first time. I just love it. I think it's a very good sandwich. Yeah, I agree. And I like that the fact that they had the um hops um, batter on the onion straws as well that they served on top of the sandwich. Now, I'm not a fan of um hops. Um hops, uh, which is the beer by the three brothers of Hans and the Pop Group, um, tends to be really hoppy, as you would imagine. Really hoppy. I'm not a hoppy. hoppy? Yeah, um Seriously? hoppy. Um hops. Yes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan. Well, I, I, I you know, I. I, I, I'm okay with Hanson as a, as a band, but in terms of the beer, really hoppy. So uh, not, not necessarily a big fan of that, but stick I did to f- you know stick to what I know. I like Guinness. I do like that. But, yes, it was very good. Yeah. Well, you know, some of these dishes, as, as we talk about them, we're going to mention what they were paired with as well because mm, hops, pale ale was the uh, drink of right. choice. Because uh, with this, when we got to try them today – the beer, wine, or cocktail that they're going to plan on pairing them with at the festival was also what they were paired with today. So, mm, hops, pale ale was paired with that burger, which of course makes sense. I mean, they used it in the onion fries. At the same location, we also had the South African vegetarian bunny chow sliders, and it was served with the Dreaming Tree Chardonnay watermelon salad. Since it was the Dreaming Tree Chardonnay, it was paired with that as well uh, for the beverages. You could choose either the red blend or the white blend. And uh, for those of you who are fans of the Dave Matthews Band, that is who is behind the making of the Dreaming Tree. Hi, I'm Dave from the Dave Matthews Band, and I love... I love my, my wine, and I love the Food and Wine Festival. Yes, I'm Dave Matthews. What would you say about my, my wine, Kristen? What would you I, say? I would say that your imitation of Dave Matthews sounds nothing like him at all. It's like, it's like Dave had one too many drinks and was hanging out in a country bar. <laughs> so, <laughs> Do I sound more like oh. No, not a, I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> Tony, what did, what did you think who about actually, the... Who actually had it? Who actually had this? Yeah, I didn't try did it. Did you? You didn't have I it? Didn't. No, I didn't try it. Norma, did you try it? No, I didn't try it. No, I guess not. Okay, so I'm the Wait, only one who tried it. No, 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 no. I, ha- I had it. I think it was the word vegetarian that scared me off. Okay. The slider, the vegetarian was... Okay, it was nothing to write about. But the slaw, the watermelon slaw was really good. I, I would have eaten more of that. 
Now, see, and we talked about that during the meal, the fact that the, the slider, every time I have a vegetarian burger, it is so dry. It was very dry. And I'm not a fan of that at all. I have yet to, I have yet to try a vegetarian burger that I'm like, hey, that's good. It's like vegetarian burger by Morningstar. You can get that over there at Publix. Oh, Just this, pop that. Yeah, this is... Um, right at my brother's alley. Oh, my gosh, I know the name of the uh, company. It starts with a G. Thank you. Gardenia. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, uh, I did try it as well, but here's the thing, Norma. I, what I did was actually put the slaw on my burger. So it made it a little bit better, which is... Yeah, it, it made it a lot juicier because it was a very dry patty. Now, see, I tried it with some of it, but then I also saved some of the slaw on the side because I have, like I said, I have yet to try a vegetarian burger that I'm all about. I'm and again, good. I'm, I'm, when it comes to things like that, I want a moist burger, I and mean, you can't really have a moist burger when it's vegetarian. You got no. something on it, ketchup, barbecue sauce, Ew, honey mustard. Ketchup. Why do you want ketchup? It's a burger. It's a burger. Why not? It's ketchup. Oh. I don't like ketchup. You don't like ketchup? No. I'm one of those weirdos. Mustard? Oh, love mayonnaise? mustard. Like mayonnaise. That's what you got to put so on I your burger. Be, I could be Dutch and French, but whoever likes ketchup, not a fan. Right. Now slop <laughs> up your burger with some sauce. <laughs> That's what it is. Now, the, bur- the Rockin' Burger Block Party is brand new for 2015, so yep. should be pretty cool just to check out anyway because... Uh, you know, there are a lot of really cool new things for this year. So, Did anybody try either the red or the white wine from the Dreamy Tree? From Dave Matthews? No. I did. And what did you think? <laughs> it was good. By the way, I had everything to drink here and even twice. No shame about that. I have no, no shame. Yeah, yeah, Al John's like, nope, I needed it today. Day one, vacation, must have drinks after a long weekend. Yeah, you know what? It's not, it's not a bad, it's not a bad uh, wine at all. I thought the, uh, the red blend was very good, and the uh, white wine uh, was very refreshing. So, you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily anything to write home about. It, wasn't, it didn't blow my socks off, but it was definitely a very good wine. Yes, I can tell you're still wearing your socks. Right. Okay, on to the next location, which is Farm Fresh. That is returning from last year, and this is one of the items that I'm going to guess that the majority of people here really enjoyed, and it was a loaded mac and cheese with pepper bacon, cheddar cheese, peppers, and green onions, and it was paired with the Ace Hard Pumpkin Cider. Al John, thoughts? It's all good. It's all good. The uh, loaded mac and cheese was very rich, very cheesy. The pepper, bacon, green onions added a great, um, you know, not just great flavor, but great texture to it as well because they sprinkled a little bit of that uh, that uh, crust on it, which was really nice. And the pumpkin cider, yeah, it, it's it's okay. It's pumpkin cider. You know, not everybody's going to go nuts over it. I understand the whole Americana Farm Fresh aspect of it. Pumpkin cider. Not really a big fan. It can take it in small doses. So in this case, it's pretty good. Was it a good pairing? Um, I, I don't necessarily think it was a good pairing. Um, I think uh, the pumpkin cider was just a little bit too much in this case. But nonetheless, the mac and cheese is, is definitely going to be on my top five of the stuff I've tried at this uh, particular event. Raphael, 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 what do you think? Yeah, I concur. I mean, I, I really like the uh, the green onions. It really makes the uh, loaded mac and cheese pop. Um, I agree with the cider. was You know, it wasn't bad by itself, but it, it was kind of weird to eat that with mac and cheese. I, honestly, mac and cheese overpowers everything. So it, unless you have a really, really good wine, a good Cabernet, it just doesn't go with uh, cider to me. But the cider itself by itself, it's, it's all right. I think some people will like it a lot because if you're really into pumpkin like my mom over here, she's, you know, I'm sure she likes it so you can... I like pumpkin. I enjoyed the pumpkin cider. I definitely would have it again. I can I can tell by the look on your face because you are smiling from ear to ear. So if you're a fan of pumpkin, now um, did it have a uh, how much of the pumpkin flavor was it, and how did it fare against, let's say, like a pumpkin pie? Because a lot of people have tried pumpkin pie, but maybe not have tried the pumpkin cider. Was it very similar? I don't think so. It didn't have enough of the pumpkin taste of it, spice to it, but it. It's something smooth. It's something that goes down really well. Oh, that's good to know. Well, there you go. 
Tony? I didn't have it. Pumpkin. Okay. So Man, have- pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To- Tony's doing the uh, non-alcoholic uh, right. day today, which is which is fine. Everybody had, you know. There's always those people who don't drink or those who can't drink at the at the current time. I would have to say I really enjoy the mac and cheese. I like any time somebody takes your traditional mac and cheese, you know, grilled cheese, tomato soup, those things that you think about as comfort foods you grew up with. Those things and takes them to the nef- next level. That adult level makes them a little bit different than what you grew up on. You know, it's a the same the, craft. The the twist yeah. on those foods that make you feel good, and that's one of them. As as far as the uh, pumpkin cider, um, you know, as as Norma said, she loves pumpkin, and it was one of her favorites. And it has a nice flavor. You know, we've we've got friends back home like from Megan is a pumpkin. She's like the pumpkin queen. She's everything the, You've pumpkin, heard of the great pumpkin. She's the great pumpkin. You know, her birthday falls in October and everything pumpkin is what Megan loves. You and know, the beer by itself is good. It's, it's, it's her, not bad. her favorite time of the year. So if that's you, this is, this is definitely the drink for you. I don't like cider. So that always kind of is not... I love that's, cider. Yeah, see, yeah, this is not my thing. You love cider, too? I used to love cider. Yes, I used to love cider. Um, they had the pineapple cider at um, Flower and Garden. Oh, yeah. That was good. You know, you know, what, but you also had the mac and cheese, and that's yeah. what I wanted to get from you, is that not just the pumpkin, but you had the mac and cheese, and you liked the mac and cheese. I, I did like the mac and cheese. It was, uh, I like the bacon in it. Who doesn't love the bacon? Who doesn't love bacon in anything, right? Sign me Vegetarians up. and vegans. Lisa Loeb is a, is a vegetarian, and but she see, loves bacon. But look, look at look at all the uh, look at all the problems that caused her. I mean, all those like vegetarians and vegans came after poor Lisa Loeb. Oh, huh. I but, still like you, Lisa. It's okay. Oh, I love Lisa Loeb. We're still but, friends. But but pumpkin cider. Unfortunately, I somehow have a reaction to pumpkin alcoholic drinks. No, Don't know not why. Good. Not good. So I had a taste of it. It's it's not for me, but if you like cider, you like pumpkin, I would say it's a must try because right. you can tell those two aspects from it. Mac and cheese, anybody who's not, you know, vegetarian or vegan, you have to try the mac and cheese. It's so good. So, yeah, definitely a star for everybody here on this panel. So I like it. Yep. Um, Moving on to good old Scotland, right? Shall we go into Scotland? Now, the Scotland had the fresh potato pancake with Scottish salmon and herb sour cream. Um, who here has had that? Everybody here? Did they, everybody try it? I tried it as well. Tony, what were your thoughts on it? I thought that was actually pretty good. The pancake was a, a nice taste and texture, and the salmon was really fresh, I thought. So uh, they put a little bit too much herb sour cream on mine but you know nothing a knife can't take care of <laughs> wipe it right off yeah was but, it like a dill sauce or something yeah, yeah it, it was like, yeah I think there was some dill in there some other things but it, it was good I, I really enjoyed that yeah I, I did have gotten a little bit more of that yeah I, you I, like I did it? yeah I did like it yeah I liked it. I liked it as well. I thought it was really well, uh, well prepared, and I did like the dill or the herb sour sauce. The fresh potato pancake was very easy to hold. They have these new. Um, apparently, they have these new uh, containers now. And typically, if you've been to the Food and Wine Festival in the past, you know that you know that they put them in those little uh, brown boats. You know those little brown boats. Well, this year they really are boats. Yeah, they really are boats. They're skinnier. They're longer. I think it. Uh, I think it, it worked it, out great. It looks like. Banana leaves. Yeah, it look like yeah. I think it's probably something that they can recycle easier. Yeah. You know, probably compost uh, those. That's probably what they're going for. Yeah, it almost looked like palm leaves, right? Yeah. Like palm. Corn, uh, corn husk. Corn husk. Yes, Norma. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, we should have asked that. Like, what? What is this? Is it corn? Is it? I'm sure we can find out here in September. So. <laughs> But you know what? It'll probably be served in something different. It'll be served in those, those crappy. It'll be back in that brown piece of uh, paper. Yeah, brown pe- piece of paper. <laughs> I didn't think that was where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing they had, too, while Kristen's trying to cool off, is the haggis with nips and tatties. Is that it's that not. That? It is not the veget- vegetarian <laughs> option they had last year. <laughs> tatties, tatties, right? It's tatties. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to say that on your show. Uh, traditional haggis with um, what is it? Uh, rutabaga and mashed potatoes paired with a citrus thistle featuring Hendrix gin. Now, I had the Hendrix gin. It's a you, lot of gin. You had the Hendrix gin. No, I didn't have the no. gin. No. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's, see, Tony, I want to. I want to indict you on this. Because so. normally Tony will take part in the drinking, yeah. but yeah. at this time it is not an option. For I apologize Tony, so. in advance, Tony. That's feel fun. free to slap me in the face later. Oh, I can do it for you. Okay, that's great. So uh, you remember who's holding the microphone? So uh, who here had the haggis? Anyone? Because I, I had a, I had a sniffy sniff and a small bite. Did you did you actually have a bite of it? I had a small, and that was it. Well, I had a small bite of Tony's because I <laughs> right. know what it is, and when it's because I told her what it is. Said traditional, I will pretty much try anything once. Right. And you know, I'm I'm a big like I want to look at it, I want to smell it, and kind of have an idea because that kind of tells you where the taste is going to come from. It smelled good. I anticipated it to be better than it was. You thought and it smelled good? No. It smelled it did fine smell to me. Good. It didn't no. smell strange. No, you're or... smelling the mashed potatoes. Please, Norma, did you have the haggis? No, I didn't. No, you know did, what haggis did is. Did anybody? She was warm. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Norma, can you please explain to people who may not be familiar with haggis what haggis is? No. I had the gin. You had the gin. The gin kind of cleaned it all out. Okay, so for the uninitiated, haggis is actually intestine. Yeah. And I've had haggis before, and I refuse to have haggis today. So no and haggis. I have to say that last year they had the vegetarian haggis. I don't see how that's possible. Yeah, I don't see how it's possible either. But this year it's the real haggis. So if you liked last year's, you're not going to like this year's <laughs> because this is the real deal. But if you don't like haggis, you still won't yeah, like haggis. Yeah. Right, I agree. So what do you think, Kristen? I will say I'm glad, I'm glad that they're bringing something that's very authentic. I'm not a big fan of, like, let's make this particular dish vegetarian or change something about it in order to, you know, make this appeal to more people. I'm all for authentic food. Yeah. I really like the idea of so, authentic so that's, food. that's the best part of Food & Wine Festival is you come here. You've never had it before for... I don't know, maybe seven, eight dollars or whatever they're gonna charge for this. You can try haggis. If you don't like it, well you know what? You didn't spend a lot of money, you spent seven bucks and you take and you throw it for the birds to eat. So at least you, know, you can try. I don't, I don't think birds, yeah, the birds eat. Turn it back. I, don't, <laughs> I don't I don't think they're con- carnivorous. Wh- whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Just pass it to the next guy around the booth. Go here. Well, the, some free haggis. Vultures. <laughs> yeah. They'll take it. Norma hit the nail on the head again. Volcons. Right, right. Well, Norma said something really interesting. She said the uh, the gin will take care of it. I love the gin drink. Norma, what are your thoughts on the gin drink? I love the gin drink. It had a little bit of basil at the end, and I loved just how it went down really smooth. And I'm not a gin drinker, so... Well, I have to. I have to say, I, I agree. The Hendrix Gin is one of my favorite gins, yeah. and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a, you know, a gin guy. I love martinis, old classic gin martinis, and it's you really couldn't even taste it. You couldn't even taste the gin. Hendrix is a very smooth gin. It mm. doesn't have any, any flavors that overpower the other ones in it to where you're like, oh, this is too strong. It's nice. It's smooth. It's easy to drink. And, uh, you know, speaking of gin and Hendrix gin specifically, last year I was a little disappointed in the Singapore sling because the previous year you could tell that it was an alcoholic drink. You could pick up on those gin flavors. But last year... Not so much. It tasted very like fruit punchy. Yeah, it was watered down. And I'm I'm hoping that they keep 
the formula is the same with this particular drink because you can't taste the gin. But it's not so much you're going, oh, you know, I, I can't drink this. It's real strong gin. It, the, the herbs that are in the gin balance very nicely with the other ingredients. Oh, I agree. This is also part of my top five list of fun things, right? Everyone agrees. Raphael, you like this drink a lot as well. This was the last thing I saw you drink it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I got a little sample of the gin by itself, and it's definitely smoother as Christian was saying. You could, you could drink it, you know, even if you've never tried it before. It's something that you can definitely try it without uh, having to spit it back out or anything like that because I know a lot of people, you know, who aren't used to drinking scotch or something strong like that might be afraid of hearing the word gin. And, in fact, like whenever you, we go to the bars in Disney, the bartenders are always talking about talking up gin because they're really trying to get you to try new things. And so, again, this is what Tony was talking about. It's a great place to do that here at the Food and Wine Festival. You come and you try something completely new, and sometimes it's not food. Sometimes it's, it's the drink. Oh, so good. I want more. Let's just make, let's get the recipe for that, can we? Oh, that would be. Hey, maybe it'll oh show God. up in the. Uh, well, it'll show up on diningatdisney.com. No, maybe Pam Brandon, she'll put in the, the cookbook for Epcot Food and Wine this year. Hi, Pam. Good to see you before the show. And by the way, need that recipe immediately. <laughs> okay, so Dominican Republic, Kristen. Oh, now th- this was interesting. Um, Anybody who knows me knows that I love the flavor of coconut. And I love coconut with spicy because anything that's spicy, that flavor, you know, coats your tongue. If you drink water or beer or anything, it kind of spreads that heat throughout. But anything that's like milk or coconutty, that creamy kind of sauce balances all that out. And that's what's awesome about this dish. You have a little bit of heat, but you've got that coconut sauce. And uh, the sear grouper was amazing with this, mm. and uh, it was paired with, uh, you know, you had you had the rice that had some of the uh, pigeon peas uh, mixed in with it, and then it was paired with the Presidente bear. So it seemed to me like everyone had tried this dish, had different versions of this dish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there were varied uh, tastes. Some of it had no temperature. salt. Temperature Mine was cold. Was cold. Uh, some of it was too salty. Yeah. Some of it was too creamy. So uh, it seemed to high. me it was too, yeah, just a little bit too different. Um, Raphael, Norma, what is your thoughts on this particular dish? Well, me being Cuban, I love all lamb food, so I, I, I found it to be really good. I did find it, to, uh, the first time I had it, it was just way too salty for me. and that I, I But I liked it. And then I had it again the sec- a second time. And I thought it was perfectly prepared the second time. But I agree with you. It's kind of hard for them to get it just right. But at the same time, I think for people that like you know, Puerto Rico, they're going to find this, this to be a little bit higher scale uh, food. Because I like, you know, there's a lot of line, like a line community here nearby in Orlando. And yet, when they come here, they don't want the same exact thing they've had before. And this fish is similar to things they've tried before, but it's a little bit kicked up. Uh, with all the flavors that it has. The Presidente beer is, is a very classic uh, Latin beer, and my grandfather's going to love coming and having it this year, so that's going to be natural to him. Um, but same thing with Dominican Republic and Brazil. A lot of like com- uh, comfort food for, from the area, and for a lot of people that are new to it, it's an amazing uh, time to try these things. Very good. And uh, I know that... Uh, did you try the beer, Norma, at all? No, I didn't try the beer because I've had that beer before. Yeah. <laughs> I figure. I figure. I figure. <laughs> Just a few too many times. You know, I... It's, it's like their equivalent to Budweiser. Yeah, it's equivalent. <laughs> well, I, I like the President T beer. I thought it was good. My, my dish, my dish, yes, was a little salty. But, you know, uh, outside of that, I thought it was really good. I really dug coconut sauce. Reminded me a lot of the type of uh, uh, dishes that are served in uh, Asia. Believe it or not, because the coconut sauce, along with the um, pigeon peas and and the uh, the seared grouper, uh, if I you know took the grouper out and put shrimp in it, it would have been killer. It would have been very very. Asian. Now see, I would have put chicken in it. Oh, you see, you can put chicken. <laughs> it's just the sauce itself. I think is great. Yeah, seasoning's really good. But uh, Tony, what are your thoughts? Uh, my grouper was salty, uh, but everything else with that dish was really good. And I, I agree with the coconut. So we get that the sweet with the spicy is nice, but the grouper was definitely oversalted. Yeah. I will say um, one thing Rafael mentioned was uh, Puerto Rico, and this is actually what's going to be replacing it this year. They said Puerto Rico is not coming back, but we do have the Dominican Republic. So uh, I'm 
I'm curious to see what else is coming. Like I said, I I love I the spicy. Yeah. It's gonna have that big space right. It's have that big space right when you're getting into the World Showcase. Because yeah. that was one of the good things about Puerto Rico. It had that that you know you saw it right as you're walking in the park. It always had a line. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really nice, uh, nice booth setup too. I really liked the musicians that were playing there as well. So that was that was a lot of fun. Right? They had musicians, right? No, no musicians. Did I get that mixed up? Yeah, they had. They had. They had music all the time, they had music all the time playing, and people were dancing salsa. And right, at the beginning music. of the, they had a band or somebody playing. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> good, good stuff. Apparently, Kristen right. didn't remember that, but. Uh, that's okay. So now, speaking Look, of... Look, I'm only supposed to remember the food part. The food and the drink, that's that's always most important. That's why you have me around. Uh, yeah, oh. I just wanted to mention that they said that they were going to bring a mangu, which is a plantains with pork. And uh, they're also going to have a yuca souffle with cheese, which to me sounds really good, uh, since I didn't have the... The fish that they have. Yeah, that that sounds really good. I love plantains and pork. Bring it. I like it. I love plantains. Yeah. Now, so. now I'm gonna ask you about the plantains and the pork because I know both of those are very common ingredients in Cuban food. So, can you tell us a little bit about that as far as coming from the uh, that being your a staple food product there. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, the mangu is from the Dominican Republic, and what they do is they smash it up, the plantain, and they add pork uh, rinds into it. Oh my gosh, pork rinds? <laughs> I'm in love already. But the uh, Cubans, we have it differently, and just like the Puerto Ricans have it in a different form. Well, don't you normally fry your plantains? We have it fried, but we also, well, we also have it like uh, the green plantains, we smash it down and put a little bit of uh, the pork, uh, and we do like an adobe or oh, a yeah. sofrito on top oh, of like it. that garlic and mojito. That's all you had to say is sofrito. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm coming over to Norma's house yeah, to eat next time. Sure. But that's the reason I asked. Those are kind of staples to you know the food that you grew up on whereas you know you don't really find plantains you know it's potatoes and sweet potatoes and american food so and bananas you know more of that kind of what's the name of the executive chef because he was talking he was talking about today about how well he was talking today about how they they cook some of these prepare some of these meals and it was better than the grandmother's cooking here or whatever so he was really like pointing out how some of the food that they make here the way we prepare it is really just that beyond the authentic. It's just so good that you, it's even better than at home. Sometimes I, I, I don't think it lives up to par, but, but I actually thought today that the fish was very well prepared and also the stuff from Brazil was very good. Okay, now that you say that, it reminds me of the Bobby Flay throwdown episodes. Have you, have you guys seen those? Yeah. Oh my gosh, because it was, you would have this awesome thing that these people made, but Bobby Flay would do a, a slight twist on it so it wasn't truly t- yeah, traditional yeah, yeah. and a, and sometimes he would win and people would be like this is amazing we like it better so it really depends are you a traditionalist with what you like or do you like a unique twist on your food I mean, when and I'm coming, sorry when I'm coming to the food and wine festival I definitely want a unique twist because I, mean, I want something like Tony was saying earlier uh, something we've never had before I mean so when I'm coming here I want to be quote unquote wild you know, just to, to see something completely different. Uh, at the same time, if you're going to name it the traditional way, you do want it to live up to the yeah. standards. Because, like, I've, I've gone many times to the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean uh, booths, and they just they don't live up to some of the stuff we've had. Because we're used to having it so often at home and cooked at home. So when you come here, it's kind of a little bit of a disappointment for us. But, but definitely, if we can do some new flavor and some new twist, or maybe it's cooked differently in another country, but it's still based on that Caribbean cuisine, that to me is what I'm looking for. You know, I want that specialty thing when I come to the food and wine festival. Now, see, that also goes back to the fact that you're a Florida native, born and raised Floridian yeah. from, my, from the Miami area, that you want a twist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
But to me, when I think of food and wine, it's to be authentic yeah. for people who've never tried that that country, that culture, that cuisine, right. for them to be able to taste a little bit of what they would get back in that particular country, you know, what have you. Oh, no, no. So you like the little bit of twist. I want a little bit more of that authentic no, that makes a lot kind of, of feel. So the World Showcase is really to, to give you a brief introduction into each locale. So in, in, in staying true to the you know, Food and Wine Festival should kind of imitate that. For me, it's because I've been, you know, I've gone to the South Beach Food and Wine Festival, and there they're trying to be daring, which I think Disney, t- uh, today's festival, they showed off, uh, what is it, the Farm Lab? I mean, what's the, uh, the Chul oh, the Chul Lab. The so, like, that was really showing off some of that new inventive stuff that they're trying to do, and, and even some of the cocktails that we'll talk about later, you know, with the freeze drying and all that stuff uh, that they did. So there was a lot of uh, technology trying to be implemented which is part of you know cuisine nowadays especially you see it on the food network a lot as well so the chew lab tony <laughs> i think this i think this is going to be our our last last segment of this particular podcast what do you I, think i agree as well and um you know for those people that like the chew it is a daytime talk show that uh took the place of one of our beloved shows, All My Children. <gasps> See, I loved All My Children. Yes, I've been watching All, all My Matt. Children well. before <laughs> I even could say the word TV. And we have friends that work on All My Children. I mean, we interviewed Cameron Matheson of All My Children, you know, and uh, oh well. But we like the chew. Do you like the chew? Who likes the chew? I like the chew. I like the chew. <laughs> you like, you like, who's your favorite? Wait, 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 Michael wait. and Mario. The rest of them I could do without. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Okay, so we should tell everybody who is on the chew. If you haven't seen it, it takes place at 1 p.m. on uh, ABC, mm-hmm. all about food. You have, um, as as Tony says it, Mario Batali. Mario Batali. You have Super Michael, Mario. <laughs> Super Mario. Michael Simon. Yep. Daphne Oz. Mm-hmm. Carla Hall, mm-hmm. Clinton Kelly, mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Way to go, Kristen. I am so impressed that you got everybody. The ABC press people would be very impressed. <laughs> okay, hey, ABC. ABC. That, that's, what, that's what you get for getting us the ABC Media Pass. Wait, 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 wait. You get the ABC Media Pass. Dining at Disney does not. And so, therefore, if it comes to Chew, ABC should give us some media passes to come and check out the, the, right here. the Chew. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, I'd love to interview Michael Simon. I mean, he's like, he's from like 30, 40 miles just north of where I grew up. So, wow. of course, I, I have a special love for Michael Simon. Plus, he likes pork. Yeah. So, who doesn't love bacon? Look. Bacon is the best thing ever. Bacon makes things better. <laughs> well, isn't da- uh, Daphne the vegetarian on there? So she probably doesn't oh, like the pork. Yes, because her father is Doctor Oz. Oz. So she well, grew up with those with those like very strict. <laughs> but I don't think he's a vegetarian. So I don't think fun. he's a vegetarian. No, he's no a vegetarian. but he's yeah. he's particular with what he eats yeah, and you're sure. missing out on the fun in life look really saving two years five years off your life you get to live that much longer is it really worth it no over all these years no. no well here we go the chew lab new marketplace to celebrate 20 years we've got the new york strip we've got the parsnip silk balsamic glaze and arugula foam paired with the smoking hibiscus monte uh what is it montalobos Mezcal. Mezcal, your favorite. Oh my gosh! Okay. Are you gonna tell people how many how many of these you had? So I had what five of them, maybe six. Only. Maybe. Uh, that was a great drink. It's my favorite drink. It is my number one on this list. The uh, smoking hibiscus had this great smoky flavor, a little bit of sweetness. It. Uh, I don't know. It's like the perfect uh, mixture of of all good things about mezcal which is a particular type of smoky tequila so if you like tequila if you like the smoky flavor you like the sweetness of um, this particular um, this drink which is very coconutty you know you're gonna dig it so uh, and I know who else was a big fan of it Norma was a big fan of the drink if you like pina colada this get stuck in the rain (laughs) this is pretty similar to it but the hibiscus and the smell of the hibiscus gives it just a, a nice 
drink and you can have like many of them. Like I did. <laughs> I had like three or four. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. How, how many of these did you have, Tony? Zero. <laughs> you see? <laughs> No, 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 but but what we did... We, we, we needed, like, a little eyedropper so we could have Tony take, like, just a drop of he, that. No, he just could have smelled it. The smell yeah. alone was, was pretty good. Yeah, but it, it impacts you your taste, but is not always the same. Well, I, Like I said, the haggis smelled just fine to me, but did not taste the same as it smelled. <laughs> <laughs> Looks it smell Smells can be deceiving. Yes. As as all of the Disney Park fans know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh how about this? New York strip. I loved it. New York yeah, strip was really great. Good. Yeah, this was a uh, this is perfectly cooked meat. The parsnip uh, was delicious. There was nothing really wrong with this. Um and what did you think, Raphael? I don't remember having it to be honest with you right now. Which was that? I don't know if you oh, had the steak. Oh, no, no, no. Little... You, you had that one. It's the one that had the, the very foam on it. thin sliced uh, pickled radishes with it. Oh, okay, yeah. That one is... Yeah, I had it... Uh, it was very flavorful. It was uh, simple, but it was... Um, it had the radishes. Yeah, I really... I thought it was okay. I really didn't think it was the best dish I had, but I, I liked it. Yeah, this this makes it on my honorable mention, but the drink for sure is on my number like, one. Right, it's the yeah, number one on my list. The drink is like I, yeah. I would say this was number two. I would say that the barbecue pork slider or the right no, the Oklahoma meat. Well, let's, let's, let's 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 leave that for the end of the, okay. the discussion. Yeah, the little everybody stuff. Sustainable chew. Uh, we had there the pork spare ribs, mm. white red wine, and fennel with cheesy mascarpone grits. Wait, per- you didn't you didn't even ask me what I thought of. Oh it. my gosh, what did you think of the chew lab? <laughs> you you like took the mic and went. Hey. Well, why did you take the mic? I'll, I'll gladly hand it over to you. Well, my New York strip, it, it looked delicious. I loved the little bit of. Uh, what did you love? Yeah, it was good. I hate it when you're like moving it from me. Oh, you just throw me to make off. Sure, you're not too close. My uh, mine was a little chewy. Like it was, everybody's was cooked spot on, but I got like a chewy piece. And Raphael was like, "Hey, you can have a bite of mine," but I'm like, "No, I've got a little bit of it. I just need to be able to like taste it and kind of have an idea of what it's like." And I have to say, I'm glad they use parsnips. When's the last time you thought about parsnips? Never. Uh, last year when Robert Irvine made them at the, the, the uh, festival center. Now, see, some people, especially those I, I of like the, those that are older than us, kind yeah. of think of, of parsnips. Yeah, you know, it's a root vegetable, so yeah, you don't think of it as making a matched parsnip out of it. Yeah. I mean, my parents make stuff with parsnips, but. I hate to say it, but I've never bought parsnips to make a dish. Mm. I did. I did try making, replicating this, because he gives you the recipe. So I did try and make it at home, and it came out all right. But I loved it. I yeah. thought that yeah, the... Very good. A very good texture. Yeah, it was creamy, and it just had a nice yeah. flavor to it. Um, I replaced the starch of mashed potatoes to a parsnip smash. Oh, it's better than mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah it was good. We should say that the, the two, all the Chew Lab stuff is going to be in Future World this year, not in World Showcase. And it's the, the first time ever that they have set stuff up in Future World, other than, of course, the, the uh, Wonders the of Bob. Life Pavilion, which has always been where they hold the Festival Center. And then, of course, Cranberry Bog is back again this yeah. year, which oh, I'm excited yay, about. Oh, yay, Cranberry Bog. I'm telling you, when I got to get into the Cranberry Bog, that was so much fun. I've not been in the bog. Now, get in the bog. Get in the bog. <laughs> Sounds I'll, like a song. Get down with the bog. I'll I'm going down you, to the bog. <laughs> the, the, um, the waiters are just a little bit tall for you and I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I felt... Should I just bring my swim trunks? You can bring your Speedos. <laughs> <laughs> my banana hammock will be fine. <laughs> you, know, you know, we could probably raise money for a good cause. Like, who's going to pay to see Tony in the bog? I think, that, I, think, I think that's a health hazard. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what they're going to do with those cranberries afterwards. <laughs> I guess so. 
throw them away. You said cranberries. <laughs> All right. So sustainable chew. So uh, we've got this pork spare rib, red wine, and fennel with the cheesy mascarpone grits paired with the frozen chutini, which is a Meyer lemon vodka and carrot mango juice. Um, not a, I'm, I'm usually a big fan of the pork spare ribs, but not this time. I yeah. thought it was really tough, uh, mm-hmm. difficult. It did taste decent. You had to work pretty hard to get that uh, meat off of the bone. Yeah, it didn't fall off the bone like you would expect. Um, did you guys have the barbecue spare rib? I had it, and I had a good piece. Oh. Mine, I, I guess I had it later on, and it was nice. I was able to eat it all, and it had a nice taste. I thought it had a hint of garlic, and I loved the grits. Oh, yeah, yeah, the grits were great, yes. Oh. Raphael grits, didn't have any. The, gr- the, no. the mascarpone grits were my favorite part of it. And I'm not somebody who, with something like this, I feel like with party food or anything we're going to be with, like, a lot of people in snacking food, ribs, anything on a bone is not the best thing. You get your hands dirty, you get your mouth dirty. It's not like you're in a place where it's easy to wash your hands or any of those kinds of things. So I just, and like you said, mine was tough as well. And I yeah. don't know. I, I think was now you got to give everybody your, your tip for the Food and Wine Festival, which is to carry around that plate that you carry around. <laughs> yeah, also a bunch of wet naps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just some wet naps were well, yeah. would be well needed in the park that day. Get some wet ones. And make lots of friends. <laughs> make lots of friends so you can eat with them together. <laughs> yeah, that's how we met. I love that. Now, oh, yeah. See, that's that's why every time I'm here for, like, Flower and Garden or Food and Wine, I'm calling Raphael going, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I'm going to food and wine. Right? I think it's only popped in. Siri put that on my schedule magically. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, my Disney experience right there. Where are you going? Now, uh, the one thing I think we can all agree on um, was the frozen chutini, which was the mango drink. And, yeah. I had a couple of these myself. It was really good. And I also know a couple. Norma had a couple. They were delicious. <laughs> Is that that's all you need to know? That's all you need to know. Was delicious. it like a gertini? A gertini? Yeah, Bob Gert. Yeah, it was like it, it was a little fruitier than a gertini. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Even if you don't like mango, this the citrus sour mix with it, as well as the the Meyer lemon vodka, kind of mellowed the sweetness and the strong power that the mango can have. <laughs> and of course, have mango. I didn't even know it had mango. <laughs> <laughs> and see, if you don't like the the strong citrus flavor from Levin, they really they perfectly went together. They balanced each other out. It was just nice. Or like. This is sweet and it's citrusy, and you didn't go too much of this, too much of that. So this, I want to say, is one of the, I think, most balanced drinks I've had at Food & Wine. I want to say, aren't, aren't all the cocktails better this year than they've been in the previous years? I just feel like everything was a, was kind of a hit. Anything that I tried before that had alcohol in it, it was very, very good. And uh, this one was, you know, I actually don't think this is the best one of the ones we had, because obviously the other ones were great, fantastic. But this one was so nice, and it... When you, the weather is very hot here, that one's going to fly off the shelves because it's, it's just that calm, chill drink, and it's great. I think if you like the Grand Marnier slushy <laughs> I knew. over there, I over there in France, and this drink is right up your alley. Yep. Oh, look, this is better than, than that slush. Oh, I agree. Wholeheartedly. Like, significantly better than that slush. Yeah. Um, last, well, we have a few more, I guess, with the Chew Lab, Kristen. You want to, yeah, you want to go ahead and talk about... Uh, a couple of the other stuff we've got. Okay, we can go ahead and finish More this. More desserts? Just finish it up. We want to go ahead and finish it yeah, up? Yeah, let's finish it Okay. So, desserts. Okay, did everybody try the desserts? Definitely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tony, you had some desserts, yeah, right? I think I had most of these. Yeah. So, let's go for it. Okay, let's start with the uh, Chew Lab desserts, which is going to be the liquid nitrogen chocolate almond truffle with warm whiskey caramel. Thoughts? I loved it. There's nothing what, like... What, what did you love about it? Everything. The warm chocolate truffle, uh, the whiskey caramel that they used. Mm-hmm. Now, the caramel came from um, one of my favorite places. What was it? The... Um, the um, oh, I'm trying to remember what the name of the Farm Plus was. But it was, a, it was one of those... Uh, w- uh, they usually have a lot of these uh, cheeses and such, mm. and uh, they melted it and they dripped it right on top of it, and it was just so rich, and I loved it. This is one of my top five, 
it, now, I did, you know. For this, they made, they, you know, put the truffle into the nitrogen in front of us, which was nice. I don't know if they're going to do that out in World Showcase. I am. Ha- I have a feeling they are because yeah. that seemed to be the big okay. focus of the of the Chew Lab was mm. look at these state of the art technologies and these gadgets mm. and these cool ways that things yeah. can be made. And I had written a, a blog post a little while back about what I was hoping to see from that. Um, I had done like a couple of the Top Chef online courses. One of the ones that I did had to do with these kind of cool things of using liquid nitrogen and and making, uh, you know, taking juice, making them into little balls like caviar, uh, the sous vide and all of those like, oh, the smoking guy, which is a super cool thing to uh, see. But these are some of the things I was hoping that we're going to bring to this new technologies, things that you are seeing right now on menus of some of the. More, more expensive, more of the fine dining, um, upscale, not, you know, not quite fine dining, but like upscale casual restaurants that are using some of these really cool techniques to bring you something unusual that you can't just get anywhere. And so the liquid nitrogen, I was like, yes, it's yeah, exciting so cool. to see that on the menu. Uh, any other thoughts on this particular dessert? No? I, I just thought it was very creamy and very, very good. Um, the, obviously, the almond, almond truffle, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, obviously, the, the liquid nitrogen, just seeing that presentation, is it really, t- that's what takes you back, especially because, like, it's a, you're coming out here for an experience always with Disney, and the food and, wine, f- food and wine festival should be the same thing. So having all that stuff really takes it up another level. And uh, with, between that and the drink as well, both using liquid nitrogen. And I actually think what's neat about liquid nitrogen, obviously handling liquid nitrogen isn't the easiest thing. But the preparation with liquid nitrogen isn't really as difficult as it may seem like because usually you haven't seen it before. But actually, the process is very simple. But when you see it being done in front of you, it's a wow moment. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a wow also because it's dangerous. You don't want that to touch you. Otherwise, you know, I, I remember be being Han in, Solo. Uh, <laughs> being in middle, middle school the where, they were, showing, like Star Wars, where they were showing some cool things. And I always will remember the first time I saw liquid nitrogen in use, they took a rose, st- stuck it in the liquid nitrogen, pulled it out, and then took it and tapped it on so it just shatters into like, you know a million pieces so yeah you don't want to put your finger in that you know? I guess I didn't you want to put your I wanted to put my finger I wanted to go touch it <laughs> hey I'm crazy yeah, I'm crazy <laughs> no doubt uh, another, another one another one on the must have list would be the warm chocolate pudding yeah. with Kerrygold Irish cream liqueur custard this very decadent dessert, I think everyone had it. Uh, once again, like uh, Raphael mentioned, it's all about the presentation, My about favorite. getting an experience, and there's nothing like seeing that that warm chocolate pudding getting doused with a generous heap, a uh, generous portion of the uh, Irish cream liquor, uh, which was Kerrygold, which is so yummy, and uh, I, it just really, really wanted to lick the entire plate when it was all done with it. Now, see, it's, it's returning from 2013, and somehow we have managed to... Miss it to miss it every year we're like oh we've had most of the things there and kind of you know we go back to our favorite which is always their cheese plate or the uh lobster seafood um yeah the, the, yeah the, yeah, the, yeah. Lo- yeah the lobster so seafood uh, pie it was a like irish pie for that we've kind of skipped the warm chocolate pudding but i'll tell you the warm chocolate pudding was amazing the Kerrygold irish cream Liquor, liquor custard has good flavor. I would have met, rather it had been a little bit thinner with it. Um, Not me. Because it's very, the pudding is very, very rich. It's, it's like a fondue almost. No, it's more like, um, imagine a super, super soft, moist brownie. Yeah. That's what it makes me think of. Yeah. Totally. Uh, thoughts from you guys? You I guys think it's have? good. I, I like the, um, what was it, the uh, Kerrygold Irish Cream. I'm a fan of the, like, Bailey, so this is good stuff, too. So, I enjoyed it. I like the chocolate. The chocolate was very moist and very, I've always, I always go for dessert. I start from desserts in all the places that I go, because if not, then you don't get to try the desserts. So, I think that's a 
good thing to do and start and eat dessert first. Now, and see, they say you eat much less when you eat dessert first because of the sweetness. You'll eat overall a lot less than you would if you did it in reverse. So, I know I'm normally one to skip the sweets, although, as my mom said, you know, she's always pushing them on me. But I love this because it's. It's not the chocolate's not overpowering, but it's very great tasting chocolate. And then, of course, the Irish cream liqueur, like like Adrian was saying, is just it's a die for. Like that, that really makes it. Um, and it, it makes once you open it up and that it drizzles down the liqueur onto the, the chocolate even more. It just makes it even creamier and just you can't you can't wait to the I mean to savor that last bite. Crikey, Australia, <laughs> land of koala bears, and this Lamington yellow cake. That was the worst accent I've ever done. Yeah, on Adam, any show. you need to just on the show. Is on that what any you show, said? On any show. I was gonna say you just can't do accents. Okay, well, I like the lemon cake. It was dipped in chocolate and shredded coconut. Um, very good. I mean, it, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a wow for me, but definitely yeah. very good. It wasn't my favorite dessert there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, going around. Oh no! See, and see, this is I a like. Offender. This is. A repeat of the <laughs> It's returning since 2012, so it's. It has committed crimes in the past. Watch out for the yellow cake. Coming back to do some more. It is from Australia. Yeah. Now, see, I like this dessert. I like lemon cake. I like chocolate. And I love coconut. So you really can't. I, it just was nice. Mine was just nice and moist and just went together nicely i would have had another one <laughs> nice that's good anybody any other comments nope. uh, moving uh, moving on scotland has a tipsy layered whiskey soaked cake with lemon cream and tossed oats which was kind of the parfait and uh, i i will remember what tony said hey there's something healthy in my dessert. <laughs> what is exactly. that? We well, need something healthy in your dessert. You don't want that stuff. You want the you want the good creamy sweet chocolate. You know, not the oats. I have a feeling that Natalie from uh, Meet the Magic will like this parfait a lot because of the oatmeal and the the, the layers of the parfait. Oh my gosh, she loves parfait. She's like the yeah. healthy dessert. Yes, yeah, she loves parfaits. She's like the only person I know that loves to go to ABC Commissary because. It has the parfait. And I'm like, it's... You, oh, it's no, I, I don't, I don't get it. the Dairy Queen parfait. I like the Dairy Queen parfait. Yeah, now, that parfait I can get into. This thing was no. <laughs> it's because it had healthiness it in it? It had healthiness in it. <laughs> but see, it should be replaced with ice cream and then it'd be fine. Now, see, I love toasted oats, but I want it like, would you get on an apple I'm crisp? I'm not a horse. Where you've got the butter, you've got that nice brown sugar mixed in with the oats. Now, see, that's good. It's no. not so healthy oats. It's not like eating oatmeal. I don't like oatmeal. Okay. And, uh, how did you guys feel about the parfait, Norma? You had some. I think it needs to be a little bit more sweeter. It doesn't have enough of a sweet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm currently on a healthy binge right now, trying to cut back a little bit because preparing myself for what's coming, the onslaught of food and wine. The onslaught. So I've actually... I, I actually parfaits a lot now, um, and I found this one to just it was too uh, too many oats. Uh, like I didn't, I would like a little bit more, you know, sweet like my mother just mentioned, or just something to to balance it. It was too, it was just like condensed milk. I hate to say it, but <laughs> condensed, what is it? condensed milk. Oh. <laughs> no, that's, that's a whole while, while you're at it, let's just put flan in it. You know what? Let's just put flan. Let's just re- let's just replace we'll replace the oats with flan. <laughs> And we'll put Kakigori oh, maybe. How in about it. that new Cuban, uh, the new Cuban uh, <laughs> location that we're going to open up with? Yeah, let's let's with, do uh, that. Food and wine festival. Last but not least, uh, we no, have. No, we got two more. Okay, we have the Cronut over there from Scotland, which is a croissant it's donut. Not, no, no, no. It's at the refreshment yeah. port where it was last yeah. year. Yeah. That's which the is, same is old on thing. the menu, but is it on all, the menu all the time. Yeah, I didn't uh-huh. understand that. Yeah. I don't either, considering it started in 2013, was on the menu. I love the Krona. It's really good, but yeah, I don't know I why. I, I actually didn't like it there because it was just sitting a little bit for me. And a I, little stale. And then, and, then was, and then they made them smaller. So here they were serving them small. Where, they were baby. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, like when you go that to the grocery store. It was cute. Yeah. When you go to the grocery store yeah. and they've got the pack of all the, all the donuts and it's got the little tiny ones that are like an inch and a half by an inch and a half. You get your powered and your... your powdered 
and chocolate. That's what that was. But I think that one had, Baby donut. That one had the, all the same amount of powder and, and uh, brown sugar on it as the bigger one. It just packed into that little smaller one. I was like, oh my God, this is so much. I mean, that was good, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it too. Um, we had a couple other things to uh, check out. Kristen, am I, am well, I okay? Because it sounds like I'm taking over for you. No, it's fine. <laughs> Okay. What what we uh, once we got there, one of the things they gave us is the um, a sangria. white sangria that had some pieces of fruit, like uh, strawberries in it. It was pretty good, and it's going to be featured at the Sustainable Chew Marketplace. Now, Raphael, Norma, did you guys try that? I had the sangria. Yes, I had the sangria. It was okay. It wasn't nothing to write about. Yeah, I mean, I, I was talking earlier about how I thought all the drinks were better, but that one, now that you reminded me, is probably like the low, the low point of it. It's not that it's bad or anything like that. It's totally fine. It's just, I don't know. I found it to be too light for my for my taste for sangria. I wanted to have more fruit, but then again, I, I didn't get to savor it as much as I, you know, maybe I would have had a couple more. I had a couple more. <laughs> That's now, exactly what I, was waiting. I was trying to egg you on there. Now, when you normally drink sangria, do you have a red wine sangria I or a white lot, wine? But, I, but I've had the white one, so I just I, I felt like it, it was maybe it was the wine itself that that was used in it that wasn't punched enough. Yeah, being a white wine, I've never been a big fan of white wine white sang- sangrias. Yeah, sangrias. They never, they never developed to the red. Yeah, you know what though, I liked it. <laughs> I drank it. I drank it twice. Uh, of course, on that level, yeah. Yeah, it was the first thing we had uh, walking the death march from the, the car all the way out to the uh, the the, the uh, food and wine center, uh, you know, Are we gonna area. Talk about the yeah, should we? Okay, yeah. well, very Coming good. Up. Oh, and uh, the last couple things, Kristen. Well, the last thing I like to talk about is the fact that they presented us with a festival wine. They had a white wine and a red wine. So I want to get everybody's opinion. What did you think of it? I'm, I'm going to say I wasn't a fan of the white. I t- tried it with a couple of the different desserts. I tried it by itself. There's just... it, And I hate to say it, it tasted like a cheap, really cheap wine. It just did, it was missing a flavor. It was too acidic. I'll just say that uh, Kristen just called it cheap. But you should see the pain that she was going in because she the last thing she wanted to say was that this was cheap. She really wanted it to be good, um, and she put it through its paces over and over again. But uh, like she finally came to the same conclusion: like it's not her. It's it's this wine drink. You know, it just didn't. T- it wasn't up to par with the rest of the stuff we had at the Food and Wine Festival. Previous. Now I drank it as well. But here's the thing: um, according to the festival show host, that the the wine wasn't. Uh, supposed to even make it to this uh, event and that they were uh, they just had bottled the wine a week and a half prior to this event and that they just received the shipment so it's supposed to age in in in, uh, in the bottle for several months before actually being served which at the time that when the food and wine festival is actually going to happen it's supposed to you know mature and get better tasting however at this time after a week and a half of after just being bottled the the wine is not uh, anything to write home about by any means may, may will it change let's find out here in a couple months and uh we'll we'll try it again just to see i hope it's true because you know last year Raphael, norma tony you were there we we did the same event last year the tables in wonderland and they said the same thing about mm, hops <laughs> like Oh man, we're not supposed to have gotten this yet, and yeah, this and and this is this this is something exciting. We just got it in this week, and you get to be the first people to taste it. And it makes me think, like, is this the same kind of spiel, or is it is it true? Was it really just bottled? So we're gonna have to wait until uh, this fall to find out what we should really expect from this particular wine. I do hope that they're right, that it was bottled last minute and it still needs some aging to do and a little bit of uh, maturing to taste better. I'm afraid it won't. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> well, um, well, let's let's wrap this up and move on to uh, let's we'll end up, up. Yeah, we'll end up doing uh, another episode coming up more food and wine festival uh, 2015 information for you 
let's go around the table and uh, discuss where everybody can fa- be found. Tony. Uh, DisneyParksPodcast.com and DisneyByTheNumbers.com. I'll keep it simple. TheMouse.com, D-A-M, D-A-M-O-U-S-E.com. And, and Norma can be found on occasion with her photos being on TheMouse.com. You can find me, right, unless you want to also promote your Instagram. You can also uh, find me at uh, www.teakroom.com on Source of Radio. Chris and I host another sister show. Um, also with that, WDW After Dark and JediMouseketeer.com. And, of course, dining at Disney.com on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and now Periscope. You can find us at Dining at Disney and the Dining at Disney on YouTube. Why that is, I don't know. It just said it wasn't available, but nobody has it. So who knows what's going on right there. But until next time, I'm Kristen. And, of course, I've got my special guest with me today. And we hope you have enjoyed all of this food and wine festival information. Uh, and we are part of the We Be Geeks Network. So make sure you download, subscribe, and all of that kind of good stuff. So bon appetit. Listen to WDW Tiki Room, the show about all things Disney. Fridays, 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on Sorcerer Radio. I'm Kristen. I'm Al John. Join us for discussions on the Disney parks, food news, travel deals and tips, attractions and event news, and more. Time to do the must-do. Or should I say must-do's? Leave your show comments, requests, and discussion topics on our new voicemail. Call 850-888-TIKI. That's 850-888-8454. You can also post your questions, comments via Twitter and Facebook WDW Tiki Room. WDW Tiki Room, the show about all things Disney. Fridays at 8 a.m., 5 Pacific, with an encore presentation, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. On Sorcerer Radio, srsounds.com. Do you hear that? Hear what? I'm receiving some sort of transmission. Routed through the main system. Routing. Looking to take a Disney vacation or cruise? Contact Kristen of MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Magical Journeys is an authorized Disney vacation planner. Kristen will get you the best price available and continue to search for deals until the day you travel, taking the worry out of planning your fantastic vacation. Kristen can help plan your dining reservations and answer any questions you may have. She'll even send you maps from the parks. So contact Kristen of Magical Journeys for your next cruise or Disney vacation, and you'll be supporting WDW Tiki Room. Contact Kristen of Magical Journeys at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. And make and Sorcerer Radio. So what are you waiting for? Book today at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Wow, that sounds great. I want to go. Well, you can't. Why not? Because we have to stay at our posts and keep rebel scum like him out. Book today at MagicalJourneysVacations.com.